In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most interesting and bizarre mysteries of the DMT psychedelic experience. It's known as entity encounters. This topic raises all kinds of fascinating and profound questions about the nature of reality, about the nature of consciousness. And I truly believe that discussing and exploring this topic could be a key for unlocking new discoveries about some of life's greatest mysteries. Now, as many of you know, NN dimethyltryptamine is one of the most powerful psychedelic substances on the planet. And the experience it offers is so profound that it's commonly described as an out of body journey to alternate realms and dimensions of existence beyond the physical universe. What's really strange is that in almost every case, DMT users report that when they're in these experiences, they encounter beings, these DMT entities that appear intelligent, conscious, self-aware, and just as real as you and I. Terence McKenna famously popularized this idea of DMT machine elves, these little elf-like creatures or beings that inhabit these spaces, these alternate planes of existence. And this experience is actually so commonly reported that researchers at Johns Hopkins University wrote an entire research article on this very topic of DMT entity encounters. We're gonna dive into some of the deep questions here, including what is the nature of these entities? Are they simply hallucinations or is there some truth to them? What can we learn from interfacing with these beings? And what does this all reveal about the nature of consciousness and reality itself? Welcome back to Cosmic Consciousness. My name is Jonas again, and several years ago when I experienced DMT for the first time, it changed my life forever. It's a big part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel, because it convinced me that there is so much more to this mystery of life than what we can perceive with our physical senses. Now, mainstream science is quick to dismiss all of these DMT out-of-body experiences as nothing more than hallucinations in the brain. But as I'm gonna discuss in this video, as I've been discussing for several years on this channel, that's simply not the full picture. And here's a key question, a mystery that needs to be addressed. If all of these DMT entity encounters are all just some hallucination, how can we explain the consistency at which they're reported? I mean, thousands of people from all over the world, independently of social, cultural, religious background, all describe these beings in very similar ways. Dr. Rick Strassman, who wrote the book DMT, The Spirit Molecule, and who I actually recently interviewed on this channel, found that more than half of DMT users report these trips to alternate realities and these entity encounters. Now I wanna dive back into this study out of Johns Hopkins because it helps to characterize these entity encounters. And the study participants described these DMT entities with a range of terms from being, guide, spirit, alien, helper, angel. And that's quite a broad range, but there were also some remarkable consistencies in these entity encounters as well. For example, 96% of the sample described these entities as conscious, self-aware, and intelligent. And 91% of the sample described that when they had these entity encounters, they experienced some form of communication between themselves and the entity, which is just fascinating. I'm gonna revisit this a little bit later in the video. Over 70% of survey respondents indicated that they believe the entities they encountered continued to exist after their DMT experience concluded. This is another finding from the research that is really hard to explain that almost universally DMT experiencers state that this experience feels even more real than this lifetime. 81% of survey respondents said the experience felt more real than ordinary waking consciousness, which again is just remarkable. And here you can hear Dr. Rick Strassman himself commenting on this feeling of the reality of DMT experiences people under a high dose of DMT in our work, they 
repeatedly and uniformly say the experience is more real than real. It's the, it's the most real thing that's ever happened to them. Um, that this reality just seems like a dream compared to the pure, you know, solidity and convincing nature of what happens um, under a high dose of DMT. So the situation here is that while mainstream science is telling us that all of these experiences are just hallucinations in the brain, there is no truth to them, the people who have actually tried DMT and had this experience are almost universally agreeing that actually there is some truth or reality to this experience. It feels even more real than this lifetime. So regarding this question of are DMT entities real or hallucination, just because they feel real does not mean that they are real. However, the consistency of these encounters and the ways that they're described demands explanation and currently there is no explanation for that. Consider for a moment as well that the idea of a multiverse of alternate universes or parallel realities, realms and dimensions outside of space and time, this is an ancient idea that goes back thousands of years and is very commonly accepted in modern theoretical physics that there are these alternate or parallel universes. I mean, string theory and M theory are just two examples of scientific theories that postulate the existence of alternate planes or dimensions of existence outside of this physical universe. At this point, I think it's also interesting to acknowledge shamanism. Shamans from all over the world for thousands of years in every single indigenous culture and society have all told us that there are these spiritual realms or these non-physical realms to existence outside of space and time, that there are these spiritual beings or entities that inhabit these realms. So it's interesting as well to see how thousands of years of shamanic wisdom is in agreement with what all of these psychonauts and psychedelic explorers are reporting in the modern era. And again, I come back to the question of, if these are all hallucinations, how can we describe or explain the consistency in the ways that these experiences are described? Now, I mentioned before that 91% of people in the Johns Hopkins survey experience some form of communication with these entities or beings. And 74% of the sample expressed that this communication happened as a form of telepathic communication, which is interesting. I mean, again, it raises questions about the nature of consciousness. The study took it even a step further, though, because they asked the participants to share any messages or insights that they received from these entities. And some of the responses are really interesting and cover quite a broad range. Some shared messages of love, that love is the answer to everything, that our purpose is to love each other. Other shared messages on death, that this was the after death state, the insight that death is not the end. Some entities even made predictions. This is really interesting. One person said, I thought about a missing Zippo lighter for some reason and they flashed to me where it was and after I came back, I went to that spot deep inside a couch and grabbed it perfectly. It was unreal. This is just a random anecdotal report, but it's very interesting that the DMT entity seemed to be able to communicate information that had real world significance and relevance. Again, how can we explain this? Is it just chance or coincidence or is there some deeper mystery going on here? And finally, some entities shared messages of divinity. I was essentially told that I was God. It telepathically gave me information that said this being was in service of God. So in answering the question, what can we learn from these entities? It seems like the answer is pretty broad. We can learn more about the metaphysical nature of reality, of divinity, but also on a practical level, we're learning more about our own psyche, our emotions, one of these entities shared information about the real world location of a missing item. I mean, this is fascinating stuff and there's a lot to explore here. Just to recap, thus far we've acknowledged that it's a very real possibility from a scientific perspective that there are alternate planes and realms of existence. If that is the case, it's very feasible that these alternate realms are inhabited with beings, with conscious beings. 
the DMT experience consistently seems to tap into these alternate realms and dimensions, which do does include interfacing with DMT entities. Could it be that in some cases, these DMT experiences are actually real or true in a way that we haven't yet discovered? That DMT is like a tool, like a telescope into our inner world that opens up expanded states of consciousness, opens up doors of perception to get a true glimpse into the nature of reality beyond what we can ordinarily perceive with our physical senses. If you ask me, I think that is absolutely the case. And as Nikola Tesla once said, the day that science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. So this could be a scientific breakthrough, not just outwardly the nature of reality, but also inwardly the nature of consciousness, because it appears as though consciousness is the level on which we are connected, interconnected to all these other non-physical planes and aspects of reality. So please let me know what you guys think. I know this is pretty far out there, but I think it's real. You know, this is all real and studying these subjects with an open mind could represent a quantum leap for our spiritual awakening, our spiritual evolution, for our understanding of the nature of reality and is so, so important. This is one of the most significant mysteries that Pretty much no one is talking about it. If you ask me, it should be front page news. Thank you so much again for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please visit me on Patreon where you can support me in making videos just like this one. Appreciate you all so very much. Thank you, thank you. See you back here very soon.